Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Berean TV. Somebody um, sent me an email and said, all you want to do is shoot down the conscious community. And you're telling me nobody's any good in the conscious community. And, um, and and that's not so. So I wanted to I wanted to speak about conscious community. People want to know who I listen to. I listen to everybody in the conscious community. Um, I guess because I'm involved in apologetics and people are asking me certain questions, but there's definitely people that I um I respect in the conscious community. Now, me myself, I don't consider myself a scholar. I used to be a pastor. Um, a few people know my testimony. I I've read a lot of books. My book game is on fleek, but that was that's because of a reason. That's because of a specific reason. You know, I was kind of forced into into um that type of that type of reading or having having a lot of time a couple of years on my hand to do a whole bunch of reading so when certain young folk come to me and tell me you got to read this book you got to read that book uh, it's a very good chance especially dealing with the consciousness and like i said ben and, and massey and all of them i've said in other videos I, everything almost everything in the conscious community i have that was written on um, maybe not newer books but from back in the days i was in in the conscious community i never heard of asara suit and city way before you YouTube, I was dealing with Ben and the book of the coming forth by day, Count Volley, Ruins of the Empire, everything for Ivan Van Sertima. But people ask me, I, I, um, I don't really consider myself a scholar, but I've read a good number of books on um, my wife working on a PhD dissertation. A lot of people, I'm around, I'm around scholars, PhDs in specific field by um, pastors that hold PhDs or a double master's degree at least minimum. So I'm around those people. I have them in my cipher and and, um, and we talk a lot, but me, myself, I, I, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books. I've read a lot of books and I have a lot of books. But who do I who do I like in the conscious community? I like Shaka Utmost. Shaka Utmost, for some reason, some people, like I said, throw the, the word scholar around. Now, who I consider scholars in the conscious community is definitely Ivan Van Sertima. Um, Renoko Rashidi, I respect Renoko Rashidi. I, I respect the old timers, Dr. John Henry Clark, and of course, Dr. Ben and 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 Dr. Finch, um, Professor Finch, um, so many others but um i don't like throwing that word around easily but younger people that i know that i consider a little younger or closer to my age or whatever i like shaka utmost um i like um doctor what's the brother name from temple dr ali muhammad he's not bad they're not they may not be as um Theatrical. When you start dealing with the debates on Sinetta TV, some people like theatrics and polite up there hollering and carrying on and people screaming and they think that scholarship. I look at um I look at Shaka Utmost and Dr. Ali Muhammad on another level from polite, let's say a polite or or a young Pharaoh. Um who else I like? I listen to um that brother Garfield. I listen to Garfield and for the record, I'm not I don't have it confused at all. As a former pastor, Garfield is a problem for the Hebrew Israelite community. Why? Because many Hebrew Israelites, and I listen to everybody, many Hebrew Israelites in various camps, they're like myself, fundamentalists. They're a fundamentalist. But when you become fundamentalist, you're studying the book and you love the book and you stand on the promises of the book. But at the same time, you don't understand that we have problems with the book. Um, and I've recently been sharing that in Sunday Seminary. When, and, and, and we don't like to confess a lot of things, be it a Hebrew Israelite, be it pastors in the church. We don't like to confess a lot of things. When we talk about scholarship and we talk about the Bible and we talk about the Bible being perfect or the Bible being the word of God, most for the most part, when scholars discuss certain things, we have to understand that those are the original autographs. I don't hear a lot of words like that autograph from scholars. That's, that's the word the scholars use when we're dealing with any manuscript that is original. The original Gospel of Matthew is an autograph. We don't have any of the autographs whatsoever when it comes down to this book. And that's a lot of things that the average fundamentalist Israelite don't know. No matter what camp you come from, they don't know we don't have the original autograph for any Bible, for any Bible, Old Testament, New Testament, the Tanakh, the Pentateuch, anything. There's no original autographs whatsoever on the planet. But at the same time, we don't have no original autographs for Shakespeare, Homer, Aristotle, for Alexander the Great, the histories of Alexander, Herodotus. We have no anything coming out of antiquity. We have no original autographs whatsoever. We have manuscripts. Now, one thing that we brag about is that dealing with the Bible, we have more manuscripts than any other book 
on the planet. That's what we talk about. But when we start talking about brothers like Garfield, I noticed that Garfield's a little past just studying the Bible. He began to look at what we call manuscript evidence, manuscript history, and biblical problems. Garfield deal with problems within the biblical text. I heard him making some statements about the book of Daniel, and that's something that's been known among um, biblical scholars for, for, for decades. As uh, a matter of fact, I can say almost, uh, maybe I can say, a hundred years, about 80 years, about 60 years, certain problems with the book of Daniel. Outside of the book of Genesis, Daniel is attacked more than any other book inside the entire Bible. Outside of Genesis, the book of Daniel is number two. He spoke about, it, well, I've seen Garfield speaking about inconsistencies with the birth and the lineage in Matthew 2 and Luke, the two gospel stories that we have of the birth of Christ. He made a little mistake with, um, with, actually, Matthew is not the birth. Matthew's he's already a toddler in a house with the wise men. That's a little different. But everybody makes mistakes with that. And there's going to be no scholar that's going to agree with everything that somebody else says completely. But for the record, yeah, I, I listen to Garfield. I like Garfield. He, actually, he reminds me of one of my New Testament professors. But there's no Israelite that can see him. And the reason they can't see him is because the average Israelite, they can't even begin to show you inconsistencies within the book and um we do have inconsistency and we do have um biblical texts or verses within the bible that's problematic and and i it doesn't hurt me to say that i said that to sister king to one sister um when we were just talking in this in this um sunday seminary class i said we don't have no original autographs um do you have a problem with that because i couldn't know a lot of christians like oh you used to be a pastor how can you say we don't have the original bible because that's the truth and and pastors that know better they need to start teaching the truth and she said no i don't have any problem with that and and i said that was good and she went on to explain because of the number of manuscripts she don't have a problem with that and you know we can talk about some more of that later on but but there's other people that I like in the conscious community. You know, there's a few people that I like in the conscious community, even though our our beliefs are different. And that's one mistake also. People think because we are all of African descent, be it Kushite, whatever you want to call yourself, um, or be original Ethiopians, whatever you want to call yourself. If you feel that you come from Kemet, Kemet or you've descended from Kemet. You better not be a physical descendant because, you know, a lot of people are pulling their DNA right now. And we have to think, does DNA prove, does DNA prove that um, blacks in America are descendants from Egyptians 4,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, um, just 2,500, 2,800, 3,000 years ago? We have to look at that. Or are we um, just from West Africa as history shows? Um well, there's a few people in the conscious community. Like I said, I like I like Dr. Um, Ali Muhammad. I don't really consider Polite a scholar on that level. Polite just talks about a whole bunch of stuff all over the place. But the brother Garfield, he's okay. But And he knows his place. He's not trying to be all in Kemet in the Book of the Dead. If the Bible is his thing and he understands the Bible and he's bringing out points to Israelite, that's important. He's not trying to jump all over the place and call himself a scholar. So I definitely, I definitely li um, listen to that brother right there. And like I said, Shaka Utmost, I listen to Shaka Utmost and I respect his scholarship on a whole different level from somebody like Seti or a young Pharaoh that'll get up there with a couple of PowerPoints and just holler. Scholarship is real, you know. The writ tells us to study to show ourselves approved under God of workmen need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. So that's just something positive about the conscious community. I make videos and some people may say bang on them sometime. But um, that's that's it. I just wanted to share that right there. If you like what you heard, subscribe. You've been watching Berean TV. You can get in touch with me at BereanTeach.com if you want to get with that Sunday seminary. Now, I warn y'all, y'all may come in there. You may hear some stuff that you, ain't, you, you didn't hear in your mother's church your grandmother's church, we're going to make it plain. And because, like I said, when we start dealing with problems within the biblical text, a lot of pastors, either they don't know or they don't want to share it or they feel that it'll do something to the people's faith. But I believe if you if you trust in the Most High um, you and, and you understand certain things in the text and how the text came about, your faith can't be shook. It can't, it's no way that it can if you clearly understand it. But some people feel, oh, well, they don't need to know that. You need to know whatever information 
information is there and it's a stirring and it's a shaking because information is out there on the internet. Another thing before I close, a lot of people say, well, you often speak about scholars. You often speak about scholars and they would send me um, they would send me lists of names of scholars such as Bart Ehrman. And for the record, I do understand that the majority of scholars, PhDs that teaches in biblical studies, Old Testament, New Testament theologians on this planet that teach in various seminaries, the majority of them do not believe all of the text. They may be neo-Orthodox in their belief or they may be atheists altogether. So I understand that and we do I do like many other people do you would look for a scholar you would look for a scholar that supports the position that you hold everybody do it they do it in the conscious community we have we have many 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 scholars PhDs in a specific field Egyptologists anthropologists in a specific field I say blacks in America if you're black in America you have nothing to do with the kings and the queens of Egypt and this is just Afrocentric madness that's being shot but we have a few PhDs in the field that say no and they and they bring up their argument this is what scholarship is about check out both sides of the story you've been watching Berean TV Thanks for watching.